In this problem, we have to find the limit as x approaches 0 of this expression here. So the first thing you should do when you're finding limits is to take the 0 and plug it in and see what happens. So if we do that, we'll get 0 times the cosine of 0 minus 1, all divided by the sine of 0 minus 0. The cosine of 0 is 1, so we get 0 times 1 minus 1. Sine of 0 is 0, so we get 0 minus 0. So we end up with 0 times 0 over 0. <laughs> so we get 0 over 0, which is uh, what's called an indeterminate form. That looks like a face. <laughs> uh, we get what's called an indeterminate form. And in particular, this indeterminate form uh, allows us to use something called L'Hopital's rule. So whenever you have 0 over 0 or infinity over infinity, you can use L'Hopital's rule. L'Hopital's rule basically says you can just take the derivative of the top and the derivative of the bottom. Now, this derivative on the top is going to require um, the product rule. So let me refresh your memory. The product rule says if you have two functions, f, which is the first function, and g, which is the second function, and you take the derivative, it's equal to the derivative of the first times the second plus the first times the derivative of the second. Okay, so this is our first function and this is our second function. Let's take that derivative so we have the limit as x approaches 0. Let's see the derivative of the first is 1 times the second, so cosine x minus 1 plus the first times the derivative of cosine, which is negative sine. And note the derivative of negative 1 is 0, so we don't worry about it. Let me just check that. The derivative of the first is 1 times the second plus the first times the derivative of the second. Yeah, it looks okay. On the bottom, the derivative of sine is cosine minus, and the derivative of x is 1. Again, now we should try to plug in 0 and see what happens. So I'll do it over here on the side. We will get cosine of 0 minus 1 plus 0 times negative sine of 0 over cosine of 0 minus 1. Cosine of 0 is 1. We know that. So we end up with 0 plus 0 over 0. So again, we have 0 over 0. So we can use L'Hopital's rule again. Let's go ahead and do that. Uh, before we do, though, let me just clean this up a little bit. This is the limit as x approaches 0 of cosine x minus 1. And we're going to use the product rule here. Um, I'm going to write it like this. Minus x sine x over cosine x minus 1. Okay. Um, this step here, when we take the product rule, it's going to be a little bit tricky, so I'm going to go slow. This is the limit as x approaches 0. Let me switch colors. The derivative of cosine is negative sine, and the derivative of negative 1 goes away. So we're going to use the product rule here, thinking of negative x as your first function and sine x as your second. Think of it as plus, think of it like this, plus negative x. Think of it like that, okay? So the derivative of negative x is negative 1 times the second, so sine x, plus the first, so negative x, times the derivative of sine, which is cosine. All being divided by the derivative of cosine, which is negative sine. So this is equal to the limit as x approaches 0. Negative sine x minus sine x is negative 2 sine x. And here we have minus x cosine x over minus sine x. You know, these negatives can all cancel. We, can, we should just do that because we can pull out a negative one up top and it'll cancel with the bottom. So we can get rid of all these negatives. This is the limit as x approaches 0 uh, of 2 sine x plus x cosine x over sine x. And if you plug in 0, look what happens. You get 2 times the sine of 0 plus 0 times the cosine of 0 over sine of 0. 
So it's zero over zero. Oh my God, another determinant form. Uh, hopefully this is it. I have not done this problem, so I just I just took this out of a book. I thought, oh, this will be fun to do, you know. So limit a little bit of morning mathematics as x approaches zero. Take the derivative again, the derivative of sine is cosine. Using the product rule here, derivative of the first, derivative of the second. So the derivative of the first is one times the second plus the first times the derivative of cosine, which is negative sine. Then on the bottom, we have the derivative of sine, which is uh, cosine. I think I, we've reached the point where we can finally plug in zero and it's gonna make sense. So when you plug in the number, you drop the limit sign. So we get two times the cosine of zero plus the cosine of zero plus zero times negative sine of zero, all divided by the cosine of zero. Cosine of zero is one, so you just get two plus one plus zero over one. Wow, so the answer is three. <laughs> what a problem. I hope this video has been helpful. Good luck.